If you didn't think 2020 could get any more crazy, any more weirder, we got multi-billion dollar corporations making moves that, quite frankly, I can't explain. I don't know what the Home Depot was thinking, but they just made a $9 billion gamble that could end it all. We're gonna tell you what's going on, what to look forward into 2021, how this is gonna affect you, and a whole bunch of businesses, big and small. It's all coming right up after this message from our sponsor, VCG Construction. Head on over to our merch store where you can get hats, hoodies, t-shirts, stickers. Link will be down below. If you've been here before, welcome back. But if this is your first time here, my name is Vince. Welcome to you especially. Thanks for checking out this video. Let's get right down to it. We have a press release from the Home Depot themselves. November 16th, 2020. The Home Depot announces agreement to acquire HD Supply Holdings, Inc. Be mindful of that name. Think about HD Supply. Very important. It says acquisition to accelerate sales growth expected to be accretive to earnings per share in 2021. If somebody wants to know, any of you want to know, because I sure did, want to know what accretive means, it means slowly grow. It means to slowly grow. Coming out of Atlanta, it says the Home Depot, the world's largest home improvement retailer today announced it has entered into a definitive agreement to acquire HD Supply Holdings, Inc., a leading national distributor of maintenance, repair, and operations, MRO, products, in the multifamily and hospitality end markets. The acquisition is expected to position the Home Depot as a premier provider in the MRO marketplace. The MRO customer is highly valued by the Home Depot, and this acquisition will position the company to accelerate sales growth by better serving both existing and new customers in a highly fragmented $55 billion marketplace, said Craig Meaner chairman and CEO of the Home Depot. Now, they want to capture $55 worth of market share in that segment. The reality is the Home Depot had $111 or $12 billion in sales, just the Home Depot, not the whole entire marketplace for what the Home Depot sells, just the Home Depot. The marketplace for MRO is $55 billion in total. What is MRO, in case you're wondering? It's an acronym that stands for Maintenance, Repair, and Overhaul. For those of you that have been in commercial construction, you will know that there are generally two departments. There is construction that will generally do the ground up work. There is facilities. That would be the focus, the maintenance, repair, and overhaul, rollout projects, refreshes, they generally handle that. So, the Home Depot at this point seems to be taking a $9 billion gamble on capturing that facilities work, that facilities professional. In addition to like paint and fixtures and cabinetry, countertops, facilities also handles things like sanitizers, detergents, hand soaps, hand, you know, hand soap dispensers, things of that nature. Home Depot, is looking to capitalize on all of that business, which is $55 billion in total. Now, is $55 billion a lot of money? Heck yeah. I mean, a billion dollar industry is something worth getting into. I just wanna give some perspective that that entire arena is $55 worth of business. The Home Depot as a home renovation provider and supplier of building materials is 110 or 112 billion dollars in revenue in a single year itself, okay? To give you some kind of perspective on what the Home Depot is looking to capture right now. Who makes up those businesses that Home Depot wants to compete with by buying HD supply? Generally, there are smaller facilities companies. I'm not gonna say mom and pop, but smaller businesses. Is Home Depot trying to corner the entire marketplace from ground up all the way out to facilities to what toilet paper you're using? It would seem so. My next question is, after this acquisition, does the Home Depot start to target 
smaller businesses, even smaller. Maybe the few specialty lumber yards, supply houses out there. The ones that have weathered the storm, that made it through the last couple of decades and they're still standing. Are those next? Maybe, maybe not. Let us know down in the comment section below. Do you think that's the next move? We want to hear what you're thinking. Craig Meaner goes on to say, the HD supply complements our existing MRO business with a robust product offering and a value added service capabilities. An experienced sales force that enhances the strong team we have in place as well as an extensive MRO specific distribution network throughout the US and Canada. We're thrilled that our associates are joining the Home Depot team and that our customers will be able to benefit from a broader product assortment, expanded delivery options, and enhanced services nationally, says Joe D'Angelo, Chairman and CEO, HD Supply. We are confident that this will position the Home Depot and HD Supply for continued growth and success in the MRO distribution space. Under the terms of the merger agreement, a subsidiary of the Home Depot will commence a cash tender offer to purchase all outstanding shares of HD Supply, common stock for the $56 per share, for a total enterprise value, including net cash, of approximately $8 billion. Now, we have another report that says total costs above market value right now because the Home Depot is paying above market value for these shares of HD stock. The purchase is more on the lines of $8.7 billion with a value of $8 billion because they're paying more than the value to get HD supply. You have to continue to ask yourself as we're going through this, why? Why are they paying above market share for those stocks? They're joining forces, but are the, is the Home Depot gonna be marketing these services through HD Supply? Is HD Supply going to be marketing these services through the Home Depot? How are they marketing? Is this still going to be business to business at this point? Or are they gonna market these services to their retail customers coming into the Home Depot? I'm trying to understand the play. I understand what the additional value adds will be, but how does the Home Depot benefit by buying HD Supply at that increased price? It's above value. I guess they know something that we don't. The closing of the tender offer is subject to customary closing conditions, including regulatory approvals and the tender of a majority of the shares of Home Depot common stock, then outstanding, on a fully diluted basis and is expected to be completed during the Home Depot's fiscal fourth quarter, which ends on January 31st, 2021. The transaction is expected to be funded through cash on hand and debt. Think about this. What is this going to do for the consumer's shopping experience? Leave it down below. Does having more value add increase prices? Do you think that they're spending all of this additional money because they foresee something in the future that's going to allow them to corner the market, drive prices higher? for common items like toilet paper, like bleach, like disinfectants. That is the basis for their sales. They also sell things like faucets, fixtures, cabinets, countertops, fluorescent light bulbs, tubes, LEDs. They do sell those things. Like what is the reason to pay such an astronomical amount of money beyond the value of their share. So we, we have more information. We it's it sort of has a spin. We're going to cite Bloomberg on this and their take. And Bloomberg must have done a little bit more research on this, and I find it I find it very compelling that Bloomberg would report. This is big news. This is a, this is a big transaction. In case you haven't been following along so far, and why this is so compelling, think about who. Home Depot is acquiring its HD Supply. Leave down in the comment section below if you've ever done business with HD Supply. And if you know who up until 10 years ago, who HD Supply's sister company was, let us know down below. So it says here, Home Depot Inc. agreed to buy building products distributor HD Supply 
Holdings reuniting the home improvement retailer with its former subsidiary more than a decade after they split apart. So they cut ways a decade ago. What is in, what can we see in the future that the Home Depot would want to buy them now way above market, market share? Think about what they sell. Follow the money. What are the, what are the things that they sell? Is there a huge windfall? I would think that if anybody's gonna spend billions of dollars, of course, that's what capitalism is all about. There should be a big windfall if you're gonna invest billions of dollars. But can we also talk about how this will affect the consumer if you have one huge conglomerate that's cornering the market for these goods and services. The Home Depot will buy all outstanding shares for about $56 a piece, according to a statement Monday representing a premium of about 25% over HD Supply's closing price on Friday. Maybe you could expect to pay about 25% more for these goods and services than you've been paying before. It says with about 156 million shares outstanding, according to the filing, the offer is valued at roughly 8.7 billion, remember we told you that earlier, including net cash, the deal has an enterprise value of about 8 billion. So they're spending $700 million over the value. The acquisition brings back together two companies that used to be under the same roof and will give Home Depot more exposure to the professional contractor side of the business. Like do-it-yourself repairs, that segment has boomed during the pandemic as Americans want to improve the homes they're spending more time in. Shares of Home Depot supply jumped 25% at 11.56 a.m. in New York and the Home Depot increased less than 1% Home Depot supply was up 11% this year through Friday's close, while Home Depot rose 27% over that span. One of the largest industrial distributors in North America, HD Supply provides everything from bleach to doors and ceramic tile to about 500,000 customers from 270 branches and 44 distribution centers, according to its annual report. HD Supply is a good business with solid margins, Chuck Grom, an analyst with Gordon Haskett, said in a note. The company has faced underinvestment in recent years, giving the buyer the opportunity to improve the business, he said. The tie-up could add as much as 33 cents a share to Home Depot's earnings, Groom added. HD Supply has been slimming down, making it a highly attractive asset in, co in a compelling segment of the market, RCB analyst Scott Cicerelli said in a note, the deal adds to the momentum for Home Depot, which along with rival Lowe's Co. was deemed an essential retailer earlier in the pandemic and remained open even as many stores shut down for months. The Home Depot supply transaction to be funded by cash on hand and debt is expected to be completed in Home Depot's fiscal fourth quarter, which ends January 31st. It says professional customers currently account for about 45% of the Home Depot sales and HD Supply could help it cement its leadership position, said Drew Redding, an analyst with Bloomberg Intelligence. Though HD Supply has exposure to slower growth, commercial and markets, sales trend among pros continue to improve and may accelerate in 2021. Home Depot sold the construction supply unit to a group of buyout firms, Carlisle Groups, Bain Capital, Dubiler, and Royce in 2007. That deal was initially valued at $10.3 billion, including debt. But in the midst of the housing crash, it was scaled back to $8.5 billion. The chain then went public in 2013. So we can see in 2007, the company, the merger, the sell-off was valued at $8.5 billion. So Home Depot took in that revenue, did whatever they did, they bolstered their businesses. 13 years later, they bought it back for $200 million more. With inflation, can you actually count that as a loss? It's almost a lateral move if you think about it monetarily. My question is, is this a consolidation tactic? Are they looking to corner more of that business out there? Is the Home Depot going to be the only deal in town from everything from screws and lumber all the way down to hand sanitizer and toilet paper. We wanna know, leave it down below. What do you think about that? Is it gonna be your one-stop shop for everything in between? Or do you still wanna do businesses with the mom and pops? If you can, we wanna know. 
If you like this video and content like this that helps you see things a little bit clearer out there in the landscape, smash the like button. It's free for you to do, it doesn't cost you a dime, and you get seven years of good luck. With that, I want to say I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you all on the next one. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.